Hi, I'm Terry, a horticulturalist here at Ellington Agway, here to talk to you today about planting grass seed. Overhauling a lawn or planting a new one can seem like a daunting undertaking, but with the right products and knowledge, you can achieve the lush, healthy lawn that you desire. You will need to choose the right grass seed and fertilizer for your situation, properly prepare the soil, plant and protect your grass seed, and water properly in order to achieve the best results. In order to choose the correct grass seed, first, familiarize yourself with the square footage of your yard and the pattern of sunlight, and decide how much maintenance you are willing to do. Agway offers several grass seed blends to meet your needs. Most blends are made up of varieties of Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, creeping red fescues, and chewing fescues. Seed blends made for full sun tend to be higher in Kentucky bluegrass, which does well in the sun and has a dark green color. It does require higher maintenance and more fertility than other mixes, but is well adapted to the full sun. Blends that are made for shade only are mostly fine fescues and ryegrass with just a little bit of bluegrass. Versatile mixes for sun and shade are available and tend to be high in perennial rye, which can thrive in sun or shade and offer lower maintenance. These mixes are also lower maintenance than those high in bluegrass. Tall fescue mixes, like this wear green, look different from other turf grasses but offer exceptional drought tolerance while withstanding high traffic. Agway offers blends meant to germinate and cover open ground very quickly, which can be helpful with new construction or in conservation situations. If you come to see us in the store, we would be happy to help you select the best grass seed and the proper amount to meet your needs. Once you have your seed and the soil temperature is above 50 degrees, the next step is to prepare the seed bed. Seed to soil contact, sunlight, and watering are the three most important factors for growing grass seed. We've already talked about selecting the right seed for your available sunlight, so now let's talk about preparing the soil. If you are planting grass in a bare area, you can better assure the soil is high quality, light, and loose with good organic content and a neutral pH. You can use existing soil amended with peat moss and lime, or you could choose to use bagged lawn soil to easily achieve optimum soil conditions. Either way, you will need a good bed of loose soil for the seedlings to establish a strong root system. Try for a minimum of a couple of inches to as much as six inches of loose, fertile soil. First, test and adjust your soil pH if needed. Then, rake or till the existing soil, taking time to fill in any holes and remove large rocks. If you're not using bag topsoil on top, you will want to incorporate peat moss during this step to lighten the soil and add organic matter. If you're using bagged lawn soil, layer it over the top of the existing soil after you've loosened it up. The deeper the prepared area is, the deeper the new seedlings can set their roots, and a deep fibrous root system is what we're hoping to achieve. If you are planting seed in an existing lawn or overseeding, you will need to take steps to get the seed close to the soil. Mow your existing lawn shorter than usual, about two inches high, making sure to remove the clippings. Dethatching and aerating the lawn, if needed, should be done at this time, as well as any soil pH adjustments that may be needed to achieve a neutral pH. Some people choose to rent a slit seeder to optimize results. Once your seed bed is prepared, you're ready to apply your fertilizer and plant your seed. If crabgrass is or could be a problem in the area that you are planting, it is best to use a starter fertilizer that inhibits the germination of crabgrass seed. Beware, most crabgrass preventers also inhibit the germination of desirable grass, like the seed you've just chosen. So be careful to select the right product or ask for help choosing. If you are not concerned about crabgrass, standard starter fertilizer is formulated to give your seedlings the fertility that they need to establish a strong root system quickly. Granular starter fertilizers can be put down just before spreading your grass seed. Sir, you can spread the grass seed right on top. Again, it is important to set the spreader properly, so read the back of the bag and do the math if needed. When you apply the seed, start with only half the amount and move in parallel lines to cover the area completely. Next, use the other half of the seed on top, walking in parallel lines at right angles to the first pass. Gently raking the seeded area afterwards will help bury the seed slightly, no deeper than one quarter inch. To protect your soil and grass seed, it is best to cover the area lightly with plain straw, mulch master, peat moss, 
or a bagged mulch product. Be sure not to use hay as it will contain weed seeds that you do not want in your lawn. Mulch master and peat moss are great options because they naturally biodegrade into the soil faster. Whatever you choose to use, apply the mulch lightly because air and water need to be able to reach the soil underneath. The mulch will help keep the grass seed in place, discourage birds from eating it, and help retain moisture. After your mulching is done, you can begin watering regularly. At first, watering should be light and frequent, as often as two to three times a day until the seeds have germinated. Remember that the soil around the seed needs to stay consistently moist until after germination. The top quarter inch of soil, which is where your seed should be, dries out quickly even with the mulch on top. Once the seedlings have emerged, it is best to water more deeply once or twice a day, just enough to keep the ground moist but without allowing any puddles to form. Different kinds of grass seed germinate at different rates, so you will not see all the grass emerge at once. The typical range is 10 to 24 days, with ryegrass varieties coming up the quickest and blue bluegrass varieties taking longer to emerge. Once your new grass seedlings reach three to three and a half inches, it is time for the first mowing. For the best results, make sure you're using a sharp mowing blade and do not mow when the grass is wet. For the first mowing, it is a good idea to bag the clippings if possible, but do not rake. Remember, when you mow, that the depth of the root system for grass reflects the height of the plant above. That means if you regularly cut your grass too short, the root system will be shallower than we ideally want. Keep the grass taller and aim for frequent mowings where you remove no more than one third the height of the grass at a time. Proper mowing practices will help your new grass to thrive as it matures. After your grass has become established and you've been able to mow at least four times, you can resume your normal fertilization schedule. Until that time, make sure to avoid all weed killers in the newly seeded area. You will also need to keep up with watering during dry periods, watering early in the day until your rain gauge shows about an inch of water. Watering deeply like this rather than frequent shallow watering will encourage a deep root system, which in turn leads to healthier grass overall. Thanks again for joining us and I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please come see us in the store and we would be happy to help you come up with a plan to meet your personal lawn goals.